all right boys welcome back to another episode of low spec labs today we're making a little bit of a detour here normally we make proxmox videos today we're going to be talking about something a little different we're going to be talking about trillium notes what is trillium notes trillium notes is a self-hosted open source knowledge base or i guess you'd call it journal right so it combines a bunch of different features. Um, it's of course a journaling slash knowledge based software, right? Um, it allows you to make notes, documents, sub notes. Uh, it has API integration, it allows you to make HTML docs. It allows you to do scripting and relation maps, which is honestly one of the most powerful features here, right? So basically you can make a document and then map relations to each other inside of the document. Right, so you can create a pretty in-depth knowledge base. And not only can you create that knowledge base, but you can tag it, process it. I use this a lot for me to host my own journal and um, keep my own ideas. The cool thing about Trillium Notes is that it's open source. You can host it locally or you can host it on a cloud service. And I'm gonna show you how to install it, how to host it on your Proxmox server. And um, yeah. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So let's continue here. I have my local Proxmox lab pulled up. Let's do some exploration and see what kind of resources I have. This is a pretty standard three node cluster, 58 CPUs, 140 gigs of RAM total, and 35 terabytes of storage. But don't take this number accurately. Proxmox calculates storage weird. It's not actually 35 terabytes. I consider it probably like half that. So. Let's go into PV heavy. This is my biggest node. And let's spin up a container, right? And we want this to be a Debian container. We're gonna call this notes. We want it to be unprivileged. We're gonna give it an IP address. Make sure we get this password right. Template, Debian standard. And we're gonna put this on my SSD store. And we're gonna give this 128 gigs of local storage. We're gonna give this two CPUs, two gigs of RAM. And we're gonna place this on our lab bridge, or actually virtual bridge one, I'm pretty sure. Give this a DHCP address. Local domain is lsl.org. DNS server for right now is gonna be Cloudflare. So 1.1.1.1, hit confirm, and we're gonna not start it. What we now have to do is make sure this container is actually in the right network. So let's go to our Proxmox host. Let's go to our network. I keep my local machines in this land, so it's in Virtual Bridge 1. This is also in Virtual Bridge 1. So I should just be able to start it and get a DHCP address, assuming of course my other servers are running. So it's able to start. Let's confirm I can ping Google. Cool, so I have internet access. So the very first thing we're gonna do is update this uh, container. So a quick app get update dash Y. And we'll let that run <clears throat> for a couple seconds. Let's see what it does. So we'll come back when this is done updating. And then we're gonna go back to GitHub and we're gonna go to Trillium. We're gonna go ahead and go to releases. And let's see, there we go. It's got a Debian package. So we'll go ahead and we'll let this download. Thanks to the magic of editing, you didn't have to see it download. So we now have this host updated. Let's go ahead and let's get it ready. Trillium notes. So the first thing we want to do is we want to install wget and curl. And let's do those two install. All right, cool. So now our server is updated. Let's go ahead and let's install Trillium notes. The first thing you want to do is Google search Trillium notes. Click the first GitHub result. Go ahead and scroll down to releases and let's choose a stable release. So let's go to releases and scroll down to the latest stable right here. And then what you want is Trillium Linux x64 server. So click that. Next thing you want to do is follow the Trillium wiki. So if you go to github.com forward slash adam forward slash wiki forward slash packet server installation. This last section right here is the most important. And it's gonna walk you through this install, right? 
first thing we do is we go back to our Trillium server and we do wget, we paste the link, and we allow it to download the latest version of Trillium server. All right, cool. So after we complete that wget, we then go in here. We'll do tar dash xf dash d dot flash. Well, first let's list the files, and then we'll do tar dash trillium copy paste. So now when we list our directory or when we list our files, you'll see another directly listed called Trillium Linux x64 server. We're going to CD into that. And when we see it in that, you'll see the Trillium notes files. We're not quite done yet. There's still a little bit more we need to do to get the Trillium server running. So let's continue. Let's see. So now that we're seeded into the Trillium server, we should be able to start the Trillium server just by doing Trillium.sh. And we'll give it a few seconds. And now it should be listening on port 8080 of the IP address of our host. So if we were to do control Z, BG to get the Trillium server running again, IP address, it should be at 1.120-8080. So if we go to 192.168.1.120-8080, you can see we have a brand new instance set up here. Let's say I'm a new user. And I'm setting this up for our notes. There we go. There we go. And just like that, we have our personal note server spun up. That's the bare minimum to get it running. But now, if we actually want to use this for something, right or if we set the server down we have to manually go back in and start it back up here's what we can do to make trillium automatically start up with our server so now that trillium is running in the background what we then want to do is copy the contents of the trillium folder so trillium linux x64 to slash opt slash trillium cool now when we cd to slash opt Trillium and we ls you can see we have the contents of our directory there so now we're gonna want to create a Trillium service so copy this command and it's gonna open us nano and it's gonna create a Trillium service file next thing you want to do is copy this content paste perfect so in our instance our user is root our group is root. There we go. So after that, it is a quick system CTL enable dash now Q Trillium. Right? And then when we do system CTL status Trillium, we can see it's running. And to test that it's working, we're gonna reboot the host. This should kill the Trillium service on this. So we're gonna let it keep refreshing. And boom so the host rebooted and Trillium started back up now of course what we can do is let's do this. now let's verify Trillium is running by do a system CTL status Trillium notes and there we go we now have our own open source node service. All right. And one of the cool things I like about Trillium is that it's very detailed. So you can do formulas, you can do code blocks, you can do schedules and check boxes. You can make daily journals, which is a very useful feature I use all the time. You can make notes. So let's for, say for instance, you start working on something, which you can do is nest a note inside of there. So you can do like a new child note. 
do some text. Right, very useful. And then you can take the test and now it's nested inside of this. So now when I go to test, I have a sub note called test right there. Hey guys, thank you again for sticking all the way through this video. That was about 10 minutes. Hopefully you learned something along the way. I had a lot of fun making it. Before I leave, I just wanna say thank you for all the support so far, all the likes and comments. And I would have one favor to ask of you. If you enjoy this content and you haven't liked and subscribed already, please do the buttons right below. I'd really appreciate it. See you in the next video. Next video is gonna be covering how to use Trillium Notes on Proxmox. It's not as simple if you're actually hosting this service on the internet. For instance, you would not want the root user to be the user running the service. Instead, you wanna create a user called Trillium and then give it the right permissions to run the service. This will take about five to 10 minutes and I'm gonna show you how to do that in the next video. Please like and subscribe.